okay, so we're trying to fit in a book. Well, I listened to the audio book. It's just shy of 17 hours into a two and a half hour film, which is still a long film. But how are we going to do it? How does the book compare to the movie? Welcome to my book versus movie for House of Gucci. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel every week and then movie reviews here at the weekend in the description box. You will find all of my social links, including my blog and my Goodreads where I review most of the things that I read. I don't think I have a written review of this one yet because I literally finished listening to the audiobook, ready to go and watch the movie this past weekend. Um, I will leave a playlist of my book versus movie videos linked up above in case you have missed any of them. They are probably one of my favourite kinds of video to make and as always I completely understand that when an author signs over the rights to their work they sign over everything and the movie houses or the TV studios can do whatever they want with it. I understand that characters, places, whole plots might completely change but I love looking at the similarities and differences between a book and a movie and bringing them to you here. So House of Gucci it's a long book. I wasn't aware of the book until I saw the trailer for the film. Knew 100% the first time I saw the trailer. I wanted to go and see this film and just putting it out there. I loved the film. It met my expectations. There's been so many films recently which have fallen short of my expectations or even films where I've gone in with no expectations and it's still been like, why? Why, why, why am I spending my time watching this? So going into House of Gucci and it meeting, if not exceeding my expectations, more on that in a minute, was a great thing. So I love, love, love the movie. The book itself, I could say, it's a 17, just shy of 17 hour audio book. I did a road trip that was like three and a half hours. I spent all day sorting out some of my boxes that came... <laughs> from America and putting them into storage. I spent all day doing that, listening to the book. I then had the journey going back in the other direction and I still hadn't finished the book. That's how long the book was. And the book is non-fiction and the movie is a biopic. So there really are poles apart. It's very hard to compare these books and movies. Obviously, we have the fact that the book is non-fiction. So it's just a narrator reading you facts and it's just been edited and placed in a certain order. It's semi-chronological. It gives you an overview and then kind of delves into basically the Gucci family over time. The film is also chronological, but we don't just have like, here's what happened then, here's what happened next, here's the facts about that, here's the numbers about that, here's the facts about the fashion about that. Um, we have his, Mr. Gucci, uh, Mr. Adam Driver, Mr. Gucci, um, and here's his family members, and here's his history, and here's where he meets Lady Gaga, Mrs. Gucci, and um, we go through from there. Um, we do have a very brief sort of pre bit at the beginning where we sort of start at the end, and then we go back to um, the very beginning and I knew why we were starting at the end there because I had read the book. But as we know, there are no spoilers here. Um, but yes, the film obviously is filmed with more drama, more comedy and the way that this film exceeded my expectations was the soundtrack. Now, it's not just the fact that we sort of start out and we've got a lot of like disco music and then 80s music and then early 90s music. It's the fact that each of those songs that they've picked, the way it's been arranged, the way this film has been scored, gives a feeling to each of those scenes. When you're listening to that information in the audiobook or reading that information in the book, the information can sometimes seem very dry. It being a 17 hour or hour audiobook of non-fiction, that although it's like about a family, it's not really a sort of memoir biography type of thing. It's like, here are the facts and here's what happened next. And that's the facts. So the book itself is quite dry. I did find myself switching off sometimes. However, the scenes, those scenes, if they've been elevated with the songs chosen for the film and you played those songs alongside what was happening in the book at that moment, even if you put the same song on repeat for that particular section, oh my goodness, it just would have been so elevated. And that's where the film exceeded my expectations. I had high expectations of the film because of the casting, because of the drama, because of the story, because you see those highlights in the trailer. However, then you put that soundtrack in there and it's like, whew, 
this is just like we've gone next level um so yeah so there we have the big main difference between these two we've got facts 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 and figures facts and figures chronological we've got still chronological but we've got drama we've got comedy and we've got music and i just ah oh, i love that about it we also obviously the film has sex scenes the book does not have sex scenes the book goes into um various like legal sides of it that the film does not so if you are looking for details about the Gucci family, details about where they started and then details about the main characters that are covered in the film and you want to go into depth with all those details, the book is for you. We see legal stuff in the film. There is quite a lot of legal stuff kept in the film. Um, however, if you want to go into like what happened with the lawyers, what happened with the trial, what happened when, you know, somebody was in prison, that's a very small spoiler but it's facts, it happened, it was in the news, so not really a spoiler, um, then yes, the book is for you. You, If you want those extra details, the book is for you. If you want to see the cows in the fields in, I think, Tuscany, um, and, you know, see the dust and sort of almost like smell the, the, the crops around the cows for the leather and, you know, see it coming to life, there you have the film but if you want to read about the facts and figures and the location and why that location and the ins and outs of the leather and why Aldo was so passionate about that you have the book so they are just basically two very different things one of the things that the film handles in a really clever way is that some of those facts and figures about the historical side of the Gucci empire are dropped in in little moments of conversation as well in the film. So you have the main scene, say for example, them going to visit these cows and Aldo telling them about these cows, but then you have like little facts and figures that are dropped in there just in, in process of conversation. Perhaps Adam Driver and Lady Gaga are having a conversation in a car and he'll talk about the red and green or he'll talk about the, the stores, you know, um, Aldo or no Adam Driver will be having a conversation with um, Anna Wintour and she'll talk about the stores and how you know I thought it was an exclusive brand why can I buy this in every single store whereas the book will go in for two hours about the fact that it became sort of devalued and there were too many stores and it was selling in department stores and it was selling in discount stores and then we have the whole deal with the fakes and Lady Gaga's character getting very passionate about the fact that they shouldn't be allowing these fakes to exist but um, Al Pacino's character being like no then we have that name out there we have people talking about Gucci we have people aspiring and the first step to that in that aspiration is them buying a fake and it's not a fake it's a replica but in the book we have the ins and outs of the financial pros and cons of that and the sort of image pros and cons and that and exactly how various members of the family differed in their opinion on the fakes it's not just one scene or two scenes or a scene in a conversation so it just goes into greater depth but I think that the film has handled the facts in a really good way and that it's taken it and run with it and thrown in drama thrown in comedy and thrown in that wonderful soundtrack and as I say yes we have sex scenes we have Adam Driver we have Al Pacino we have Lady Gaga you know they they do wonderful things on the screen um <laughs> I will say in the end credits it's like a Ridley Scott film, a film from Ridley Scott, written by Ridley Scott, this, 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 Ridley Scott, and then even before the cast list rolls, a film by Ridley Scott. It's like, do you think that Ridley Scott might have had something to do with this? It was very, uh, remember that this is my film. Remember my name here. Remember Ridley Scott. So <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. Um, but yeah, two and a half hour film. Did not feel like a two and a half hour film. I did not leave the cinema during that two and a half hours and you know that that is a big deal for me. Um, I was riveted during that two and a half hours and I genuinely enjoyed it. Will I go back and see it again? Probably. Should you pay your cinema going money to go and see it? I think it works really well on the big screen. I think that having that soundtrack coming out of the speakers in the cinema, it is a thing. Like I really enjoyed seeing it. I think if you watch this film at home, you will sit there on your phone 
and you may just be googling facts about the Gucci family because there's a lot of intrigue surrounding the Gucci family but I think it's worth going and seeing this one in the cinema so if this was just a straight movie review should you pay your cinema going money to go and see this one yes you absolutely should which is better the book or the movie I enjoyed the movie more personally because I like the drama the comedy and the music but if you are just wanting straight facts about the Gucci family you need the book because it's going to give you those in-depth facts figures dates names places names were so hard to keep track of in the book though I will say that so maybe you're better doing the print form rather than the audio form or an ebook so that you can keep track of names but yes, um, I'm making a firm commitment on should you go and see this one in the cinema. I'm making a firm commitment on which one I enjoyed more. I enjoyed the movie more. I would like to go and see it again right now, having talked about it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if there are any book to movie comparisons you would like to hear my thoughts on here on this channel, do let me know in comments. I have a boy called Christmas book versus movie coming up for you very soon. So make sure you are subscribed and my weekly vlogs are going to be going up every week here in December, as well as my movie reviews at the weekend and bookish content like this so hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on them if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and i will see you with my next video very soon thanks for watching